All right, guys, here is the finished product. If you want to hear some tips about um, how this process went and some tips maybe you can do extra, stay tuned to the end. Bang, knees, knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. I'm not working right now, so it's easier for me to do videos. Okay, um, we are going to be doing the regrind on this blade. We just did the stone washing and uh, we, we etched it, stone washed it, did the same thing to the scales. The scales had some type of Cerakote or ceramic coating on it and it was hell getting it off, but we got it off and gave it a good stone washing. I have already did the other side of this blade for the most part. Um, might touch it up a little bit more. I'm going to show you guys it here in one second. I did tape the blade off already, as you can see, because I did the other side. Now, this is a very easy process to do. It's very controlled, very easy. Anybody can do this, and I'm going to show you why. But we're using, in this video, I'm using a Lansky Diamond Stone. This is the medium. This is about between three and 400 grit is what it seems like. And you could do this with sandpaper, but it's going to be uh, a lot slower. So I recommend using a diamond stone. Plus, a diamond stone is nice and flat. And, it, and you're going to see here in a second why it makes it so easy. <clears throat> Obviously, if this was a full flat grind, it would be even easier. But it's not, and it still makes it really easy to do. I am going to have to sharpen it afterwards. Um, I won't put that in this video, but I might show, you know, show a little clip of the after, you know, after I'm done. I'm going to rush through this video uh, as fast as possible. This video probably uh, won't be crazy long. I'm only going to be showing you me doing one side and I'll probably, you know, fast forward through parts or skip through a little bit. But you're going to get the gist of it and you will understand how to do it by the time it's over with. Um, I do like the way the flame mantle turned out. I do have to say, though, this is not coming up on camera quite like it looks like in real life. The colors aren't as good, and it looks better in real life. I know I should be saying that, right? No, it really does. It's the lighting, and I'm not in my normal station. I'm at my workbench, which I don't have good lighting here, so it has a lot to do with that. Um, this is the finish we are going to be putting on it. We are doing a regrind. It, this is going to get wacky now because once you have light reflecting towards the camera, it always messes things up. So I'm going to try to get this as good as possible without the camera going crazy. Let me see if I can focus it. It looks really good. I did not do the plunge grind. The last regrind I did, I did do the plunge grind, but I'm not going to do it on this one. I think it looks cool. Um, it is easy to do a plunge grind, even with a flat diamond stone. But you are going to want to tape off, not because you're afraid of going past, but because if you drop the stone or anything like that, you don't want to scratch it with the diamonds. <clears throat> you're going to see it's really easy to stay controlled and everything and get this line nice and perfect. Now, when you tape off, you want to go above, just slightly above the line, if it's not a full flat grind, of where the taper is. So right here where this first line is, you want to go slightly above it with the tape. Because otherwise the tape will hit the diamond stone or whatever you're using and it will it'll gunk up, you know, and you'll have to constantly clean it and everything else. Um yeah, let's uh let's get started and I can talk a little bit while I'm going. I'm going to be using this as like a prop. Like this. Let me see if I can't give me one second, guys. Okay, first of all, we are taking the diamond stone and we are laying it right here on this angle, right where we want it to scratch. Come on. There we go. Right there where we want to scratch, we're going to lay it flat and we're going to go up and down. 
and try not to tilt like I just did. I'll have it firmer in a second. I'm just trying to show you guys up and down, up and down, up and down. Now you're not gonna want to shift around like going side to side or anything like that. Straight up and down. And also when you're pulling back, try not to go like this or like this. Try to go directly straight. And we're gonna go just like this all the way down on the the other side, you'll notice I kind of rounded the tip, so it looks more like a custom finish where I went like this and I went like that. I wasn't sure if I was going to do that or just go straight across, but it definitely looks more custom when you round it. I do have to touch it up still a little bit more on the other side. Anyways, <clears throat> now, when we're doing it though, we're going to go across, I'm going to start doing it, hopefully you guys can hear me over this, we're going, see, and I, I can lay it there and feel right where it's at, and whether or not it's going to tilt on me or anything else, so I have it flat, I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to work my way over, and then afterwards I'm going to come back, and actually I'm hitting a little bit of tape right here, so you see it? I'm going to show you. So this is one mistake. See how that's perfectly on that line right there? I am going to cut that off really quick. Come on, man. See, this is the problem with things reflecting. See that right there? I'm going to cut that off really quick. Give me two seconds. Okay. If your tape's line is not perfectly straight, wherever if you're if you're not you're doing a full flat grind, you're doing um a knife like this where you got the you know the drop down to the edge halfway through the blade it's not a big deal if it's not perfectly straight down that line it's really not because the way it's going to go as long as you sit flat it won't go above that line unless if you grind more than i'm going to because i'm just going to put a nice finish on it basically i'm just removing the stone wash i want to get a nice grip pattern all the way down it and that's all i'm trying to do now if i was doing on um like where i'm trying to remove so much steel that it, i'm changing the thickness then it will because the the deeper you go the higher it's going to go up the blade so but me, I'm just putting on a satin finish, basically, and just doing, I'm basically just grinding off the first layer of, of the steel, basically. I'm basically just, just removing the stone wash I put on there, which putting the stone wash on there, one, gave me the finish on top of the blade that I wanted, and two, can you get this it to do off and two it um it helps you see exactly what you're hitting like already like look you see where i'm hitting you can see already what i'm hitting and i gotta get this residue off of this stone and see that's the problem if you don't go above that line you will be getting residue on your stone and it makes things a lot you know slower technically i've done this without the tape and it turned out just fine. I didn't have no issues. I was just really careful. I just wanted to show you guys that you're probably going to want to. Just in case, like say if you accidentally go like that. If you accidentally lift up and go like that, you, then it doesn't scratch it. Let me come back over here. You know what? I am going to cut more tape off. Huh, I honestly thought I had it above the um that line, but I guess I I must have been it was just one little part. I was really on it just a little bit. This also gives you a nice firmer feel, and you can feel when you get that finish all the way down to where you want it. You'll start realizing it. Sorry. That tape residue really messes you up because it like lays across the blade. And then also flip your stone every now and then so you get a consistent, um, like you basically um, use your stone consistently and you're not just overusing one part of it. Yeah, 
let you guys see what's going on here. And then after, like, this is going to start going really quick here. And also, it's going to go really quick for you guys, because I'm going to fast forward. Oh, it's clear. And then what? I want you guys to be able to see it, and I gotta be able to reach it. So I don't have the camera, it's just, I got the arms of this thing, I want you guys to be able to see this really good. Just do some rubbing alcohol to get this tape residue off, I didn't see those little pieces sitting on the top. My own covers it here. In there. I need it to hold firm. You guys can put use a clamp system if you need to. C clamps, whatever. I like to be able to pick my knife up constantly and look at it and everything else. So But you see how easy this is. I mean Obviously, I still have a lot more to go, but you see where it's headed, and you see how easy that line, remember, I, I took the tape off, you know, you see how I'm not going above that line, because I'm just sitting nice and flat, you know. Make sure you're not rocking, make sure you're using all of your stones, flipping it back and forth. I would recommend that if you do have a brand new stone, though, um, you might want to sharpen on it first or something because brand new stones tend to have diamonds fly off of them a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if that would mess you up or anything, but, you know, just a, just a thought. If you buy a diamond stone just for this, think about it. Sorry if it gets blurry here and there, damn camera. Usually I'm up a closer, you know, I'm holding it down with my weight and everything. Right now I'm like spread from a distance. So I'm like putting pressure with the palm of my hand, getting the damn workout with you guys. Looks good though. It's looking good. Take a look at it again. That's something to get back here by the plunge grind. I'm not going to get the plunge grind. You see on this one how I left it stonewashed. If you can see it, the light is so messed up. You know what I'll try to do? I'm going to try to insert some good pictures from my other light system in this so you'll be able to see how this actually looks. You know, it'll probably look a little bit better, but this is stonewashed right here. And this is the satin, if you can't tell. You know, if you can't tell. I'm going to start back here at the beginning. Right there is the plunge grind. If you all want to do your plunge grind, you do it just the same, just start touching it a little bit. Just work your way over and touch it. Touch it, and you'll watch the lines, or the grit marks start going on there, and you can uh, determine how far you want to go and stuff like that. And under those circumstances, I mean, you, you want to uh, tape off your, your scales and stuff like that. I'm going to be um, taking this knife back apart after this and cleaning it and everything else, so I'm not so worried about the diamonds getting in the bearings or the steel or anything like that. I'm definitely going to be cleaning this. I'm going to have to get this thing off camera right here because I can't get close enough to where I look. I can see it kind of. working my way over. Oh, that was gross. 
that right there. So if you just steal that stuck on the stone somewhere, I don't know. Maybe wipe the slash stone down a little bit, clean it off, soap and water, or just use some alcohol. Help it work faster. Try not to talk too much because I'm hoping to fast forward through some of these parts and I don't want you hearing me sound like I'm on speed. You know, you guys probably crack up. I think it might look better to just go straight across this tip rather than round it like that. Um, it does look more custom when you can circle around, you know, the belly of a knife, you know, kind of like a mudbird, if you notice, like those are all uh, hand ground. Um, but the reason, but since this isn't a belt and this is a stone, I don't, it doesn't look as consistent, so I might just go straight. You are going to want the diamonds to do the work. Don't put a lot of pressure. You can put minimal pressure, you know, like a little bit of weight because you are trying to grind off and it's not sharpening or anything like that, so... Um, but don't put too much weight. And the reason why is because you don't want grits digging deeper than other, you know, you don't want the scratches to dig deeper in some parts, not in others. So, so try to be nice and consistent with your weight and how much pressure you put. I think you guys get the gist of it. I am going to finish this up and get right back to you. All right, guys. If you notice on this one, I did do the plunge grind. I think it came out really good. And it was really easy to do the plunge grind. Also, if you don't... Know, a reason you might want to do this type of finish is maybe because you messed the blade up by scratching it or maybe it's a surface that takes fingerprints really bad or maybe um, you want to prevent it from getting so many scratches you can do that like this one I damaged the blade and by using it on a fixed angle system and the sharpening angle went up way too high. So the way I fixed it was I did a regrind and it came out really, really good. These scratches were already there. That has nothing to do with the process of the, the satin finish, but let's get to the one we did. I like the way it came out. It came out really nice. I like how the stone wash wraps around the satin finish because this is stone washed down here on the plunge grind. Now, for the handle material, if you're wanting brighter colors, then you're going to want to polish the surface. The more polished the surface, the more brighter the colors. Here, let me turn this light off really quick. Give you a nice little visual of the naked eye. This is kind of a little bit more of what it looks like to me. 
but I wanted this type of battlefield look or like it looked like it got pulled out of a fire pit or you know off of the floor of a mechanic shop or something I don't know I just you know was trying to get a nice beat up look and you know something uh that looks really tough and it came out beautiful but you might want brighter colors more solid colors than you know do a polished finish you know you want to go up a grip pattern with sandpaper like 300 like 100 grit 300 grit 500 grit 1000 grit 3000 grit but with this if you're going to want to do a regrind and thin out your blade then you're going to want to start with like a 50 grit then move up to a 100 grit to a 300 400 grit finish that will make it go a lot faster each side took me about 30 minutes a piece and then uh, the edge was separate i did put a nice edge on it now to maintain this you are going to want to oil it put some oil on it wipe it off um, and then do that every couple weeks and if it gets wet or if you cut up any fruits vegetables or meat make sure you dry it off really good you don't want uh, moisture to get down into the crevices even though you can't feel them it they're still there and you don't want moisture getting stuck down in them or any juices or anything so make sure you dry it off really good after using it that's with any knife though but especially d2 um, I do have to clean it up a little bit after you're all done. Make sure you take your knife apart, clean it really good, and re-oil it and put it back together. I chose to keep my handle on it because I was able to, to keep pressure on it really good while I was working. And then I could just pick it up and check it out constantly instead of keep it in a clamped um, system. Also, it uh, made it to where I could um, you know, do it with the camera going you know because i i did a lot most of it with um under the camera also make sure you keep your same angle the whole time otherwise you will get swirls and if you do get some swirls just make sure you go back over it with that angle you started with um yeah i think it looks really really good i do like the way it came out and now when i'm using it i don't have to worry about it getting scratched or anything like that at least not as bad and you know it makes it mine you know um and now it also if i want to change anything in the future like anything with the handle say if i want to you know strip it all down and just go to raw titanium i can easily do that with some sandpaper um, if I want to strip it all down and turn it all one solid color with my other anodizing system, I can. If, you know, I could do so many different things. I might take this side and strip the anno off right here, just right on top to kind of match this side. I think that looks really cool. But yeah, there you guys go. Thank you for joining me. And if you guys wind up doing a system like this or wind up doing a process like this, let me know, know how your eyes has turned out. Thank you.